Um, Moad's building is closed because of the coronavirus um, and our mandatory shelter in place, but you can still get your fill of art every single week. Wednesday is at one o'clock. I am really excited to be joined by Daman Melancon. Um, please, at, throughout the, uh, this conversation, please feel free um, to join into the chat, to make your comments. If you have questions, uh, for us, please use the Q&A. And uh, the format is that the first 40 minutes, Demond and I will be in conversation. We'll get a little sneak peek into what he's been working on, um, find out a little bit more about him, um, and then we'll go into your Q&A. So yeah, if you could please go into the chat and let us know where you are chiming in from, that would be great. Um, I see Oakland is, is here in the house. Uh, I hope we have some New Orleans in there as well. Um, I, I want to start off uh, by, by just letting you know that you just watched a little snippet, the intro to the film, All on a Mardi Gras Day. Um, if you want to see that entire film, uh, you can visit Daman's website uh, today. We'll put that into the chat box for you as well, um, and you can watch the entire film. But today, we're joined by Daman. Uh, I'm going to give a quick... Uh, bio of you, Demond, and, and of, of course I can never get, yes, New Orleans is here, yes. Uh, <laughs> I can never get comprehensive, but, but I hope that's what this conversation will do for us. Uh, Demond Melancon, or Big Chief, uh, is a contemporary artist who was born in 1978 with extensive roots in the black masking culture of New Orleans. With a career spanning almost three decades, uh, Melancon is well known for his meticulous hand-sewn beadwork he used to create massive Mardi Gras Indian suits, which are composed of intricately beaded patches depicting actual and imagined events from African and American history. His complex and multi-dimensional port portrayals draw inspiration from indigenous people in America, enslaved Africans, and inspirational leaders from history. His work draws from a broad variety of stylistic influences, features imagery rich with symbolism and meaning, addresses stereotypical representations of Black people, and tells powerful stories from his experience with the African diaspora. Uh, he grew up in the Lower Ninth Ward of New Orleans. He was initially taught by a prolific Mardi Gras Indian elder named Big Chief Ferdinand Bigger. Melancon went on to study under Nathaniel Williams in connection with the 1993 Louisiana Folklife Apprenticeship Grant. He joined the Seminole Hunters and Mass as a spy boy for over 15 years under Big Chief uh, Kato Jones. Did I say all right? All right. In 2012, the elders of the Mardi Gras Indian community declared that Melancon would then be known as Big Chief Damon Melancon of the Young Seminole Hunters his very own tribe based in Lower Ninth Ward of New Orleans. Damon, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm, I'm thrilled to be uh, sharing this virtual space with you. Thank you for having me, bro. Yes, indeed. Uh, what do you want? Somebody just asked me to do something. Turn the chat off. You can, you can uh, hit the, in your chat box on the left, there is a red box. You can always, uh, Hit that and the chat will disappear for you individually, or you can move it to the side or minimize. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I just want to get that get get that house cleaning out there for everyone. The housekeeping. Um, what, what 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 are you up to right now? All right now I'm steady beating. I wouldn't lie to you. I'm in the art every day because you know I I'm inside like I like to be. I'm just inside all the time. You know, just watching, the movie, <laughs> looking at Corona, you know, like everybody else, you know, just just in here. And, and it makes you it makes you think about a lot of different things. And it makes me as who I always been just anti-social. Just want to speak to <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it make me just, you know, whip up on my art. So yeah, I just been staying in, man, and studying, you know, different art and just studying different artists looking at everybody and what everybody else is doing. You know, a lot of people are following. A lot of galleries, you know, they home now and they, they, they in house now. And you can see a lot of things, you comment on certain things and certain people that you don't see coming back, they, they're hitting you back now. So it, it's, it's interesting what's going on, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of changing the game, huh? Yeah, yes indeed, yes indeed, a lot. <laughs> 
So, so with the shelter in place, you've just been uh, head down working on working on your work. Oh yeah, I, I, I've been uh, I've been beating like crazy. I will not tell you. I, I uh, I've been sewing since the day after Mardi Gras. So wow, since February, you know, and I've been sewing ever since February because. You know, I, I try to do my art and I'm trying to make another suit. So I have to stay on top of everything. So, you know, and then I'm beating for, for, for a job now. So it's my job, everyday thing. So I love it. And it's, it's, it's like I told you a little while ago, it's like being born again. You know, it's like being a kid. So it's fun. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, have, have, have you, have you, I mean, it, it sounds like you're working more now. Uh, than you were. There, there's a little less distractions going on out in the world, pulling you away from the studio practice. Um, do you, did you think anything in terms of your subject matter has changed since you've been on uh, <laughs> since since you've been on this quarantine? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Because now you 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 like I listen to a lot of uh, uh, Afrobeat. I listen to a lot of Fela Kuti. So. You know, yellow fever, and you think about, you know, what you're listening to, and you think about, you know, what they were thinking about back then, and then you think about what's going on now. You, 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 you think about what you're gonna be. They gotta mean something. So, yeah, it's it's changing up. It's changing up a lot of ways that I go. You know, with what I'm going. It makes me think about my ancestors. You know, it makes me think about the older people that were in my life and the people that I study. So yeah, it's it's changing up. It's changing up from, you know, what I used to sew to going into now the COVID thing. It's not COVID art. I I, I, I'm, I don't like to call it COVID art, but uh, <laughs> relative art. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so you've been going more into your own personal histories and ancestries. Is that, is that what yeah, you're hearing? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. and. You know, a lot, uh, yeah, and, and I just did a piece uh, about the healthcare workers, you know, because oh, my friend- I saw that. Yeah, that, that's my friend, he hit me up from the Red Bean Crew down here in New Orleans. Uh, my friend Devin hit me up and he wanted me to do a piece. And I had already been thinking about the mask because a lot of people just play around with the mask. And I think that that piece should stand for uh, what we should be doing in New Orleans. So they put it up all over the city and I'm thinking, you know, little posters of it and, you know, it's promoting a big cause. And I'm thinking what I've seen going outside, a lot of people play around with the mask. So, you know, that, mm. piece, that piece is a, a statement piece. That is 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 called won't bow down on the battlefield. It's called battlefield, but they won't bow down. So just thinking of what what our you know frontline workers doing every day, they're going up there on the battlefield, so they won't bow down, and we can't bow down by not wearing the mask. So yeah, that piece there okay. changed the game in my mindset and in my heart. So yeah, that's where I'm at with it. You know. So it, it, yeah, I, I remember see, I, I saw that on your Instagram and um, can, you know can, can you tell people what your Instagram account is so so if they're not familiar with your work they can check yeah. that out. I'm at Katamawi Q A D A M A W I. Yeah, that's me at Katamawi. That's me. On yeah, and I and, and I, I I saw uh, your post with. Uh, with with that image go up pretty fast. It, it seemed like you put that together maybe in the first week of, yeah. of quarantine, and and then I started to see posts of the posters on you know telephone poles, on buildings and windows, just everywhere. Um, yeah. how, how, did, how did that whole thing come about? So that that piece is is for promotions for the Red Bean Crew. To, they they commissioned me to do the piece for for the Red Bean Crew to to, to raise up money to feed. The healthcare workers, that was their first push. Now they're feeding the second line and they feed the Mardi Gras Indians. So they took they taking care of the healthcare workers and the culture in New Orleans. So the piece was made to, to make up flyers to promote up over the whole city to uh promote that, to help feed the the, the culture and the and the, and the frontline workers in New Orleans. So it's a big call. I love it. Yeah. Wow. 
So yeah, so 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 your work is becoming uh, a little bit more. You're becoming more of an activist and a change maker through your work. Yeah, it's like. fun. yeah, it feel good. Yes, indeed. You can say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. Um, before we start deep diving into some of your spe specific pieces, oh, and I saw something coming in through the chat um, from from your gallery. Um, Oh yes, and we're also uh, we're also the the event has been co-sponsored um, through your gallery. But I, I saw uh, a, a little note that uh, how do you how do you pronounce your last name? Oh, all right. So so the C is silent and it's it's spelled like it's 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 it's, it's Milan song, Milan song, like the. Okay. Like you said, a long song, song. That's, that's, yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's a r r real, real Creole name, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Creole, that's us, my long song. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> thanks, yeah, thanks, I, thanks for clar I, clarifying that. Elementary school has been my long, my long con, and I was, my name is my long song. <laughs> Thank my you, song. All right. <laughs> I, I I appreciate I appreciate that coming through. My family's also from Louisiana, so you know, mm -hmm. as we move to California, everyone anglicizes the names. But yeah, <laughs> got, got to keep it to the original. Um, I'm 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 also interested in in going back into your history. Um, I've I've read a little bit from your website and and even seen a little black and white photograph of you um, masking at a very young age. Um, what what how, how did you become involved? I, I read your bio, but can you tell us yeah. more about so, how you became so, involved in masking culture? Mm -hmm. So I started masking. I was my mom. My mom didn't bring my mom was she 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 my, she didn't bring us to Mardi Gras. So my grandfather brought us to the Zulu parade. You had to go by grandpa and go to the Zulu parade at five o'clock in the morning on on Fat Tuesday. So he'll bring you to the Zulu parade on Jackson and LaSalle uptown. This was this was my coming up. And in the evening, after the parade passed, he bring us straight back to the house. So we back in the night while playing football. So we playing football on my block on Kentucky Street where I was living at back when I was a little kid. And the St. Cloud Bridge, right, right, right at the end of the block. So you could when the St. Cloud Bridge go up or go down Mardi Gras. When they go down, the Indians coming down the St. Cloud Bridge. So when I was a kid, I used to see the Indians come down the bridge and I used to tell my mama, you know, run inside to my, look, they out there. And she got to come catch me. And one year, this is, uh, I, I say like 1992, this year she, she came, she just, I kept going. I kept going with the Indians and I kept going all the way up to Cleveland, I kept going. I told her, look, I won't be there then. So, I, I, that's how my, my career, like just watching them and following them, that's how it started. I, I, I just ran after them after, after coming from the parade with my grandpa. So uh, the next year, I went to junior high school. When I went to junior high school, I had friends and, and, and my friends that I, I, I played with on the, on the yard. We cut school, I won't lie to you. We used to cut school. <laughs> They, one day is March 19. March 19 every year is, is St. Joseph night all over this thing. So, uh, uh, 1992, I met my friends Marquis T. Rowe, uh, Emmanuel Hingle, and Jeremy Stevenson. And uh, they were singing Indian songs on the yard for lunchtime. And I'm like, man, they wrote. You know, this I, I, knew, I knew it was hype because they used to get hype. And they used to call me the wild man. So I was just like out there. But I, I, was, I had to get it. It was, it was, it was trouble. But uh, that day we cut. And so we went to the house. They still St. Joe tonight, man. I'm going home. So I went with Marquis. When I went home with him, he had an Indian suit in the corner in his room. So I was like, man, he an Indian. So I, you know, I always move up the songs and hearing them singing and stuff. But uh I went home with him and man, it's like uh, the time passed and three o'clock came and he started putting the suit on. So he, ah. started, he started putting the suit on. I started getting excited. I'm like, man, you are, he, he, he started, his brother started putting it on him and you can hear people outside. So I'm like, oh man, when he opened the door, my, my other friend, man, you got his suit on, Jeremy got his suit on. So yeah, man, that night that. I go home about two, three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I'm, 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 man, I went home. My mom was sitting on the porch with a belt. My mom whooped my butt. That's how I, <laughs> that's, that's how I started. That's how I 
that's what happened. I, I, my mama was waiting on the porch. What the hell you doing? Went, went to gun off and whooped my butt. So uh, the next day, I go to school. She said, I'm coming get you from school and you're going to bring me to their house and show me where you was at. So I brought her by, uh, uh, by house. I brought her by my Pete house. And my key mama said, yeah, he was with us and doing that. He went uptown with us and all this and that. And she let, she, you know, she she talked to her and she said, all right, well, you can come over. I know where you're at now. And so I started going over there with them, started messing with them. And that's how I became a seven ward again. That's how I started with wow. the with the Tootie Montana Young gang. That was the, that was the, the that was Tootie Montana Young Indians that he taught how to marry. So I started with them and they, they man, they, they gave you crap. They they treated you like your ass. They gave you the dumb boy. They ain't play with you. So, you know, I, I met other people. And that's how I met Ferdinand Bigard. I, I got a little better. I, I I got in a like a recruiting style. I started getting recruited by other elder Indians. And one day I did a photo shoot by a, a photographer, Christopher Fo uh, Porsche West. And he had a brother named Charlie over there. That was one of the Seminole recruits. So he told my mama at the at the photo shoot, the mom can match with us. He said, my mama said, well, how much it costs for him to match with y'all? Three thousand dollars. Oh no, you ain't gonna match with them. So that's <laughs> so that 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 was another story. He told her, no, I'm gonna bring him by Papa. Papa gonna teach him how to sew. And that's going that he gonna he, he ain't gonna have to spend all that money. He ain't gonna have to pay nobody for no patches. He gonna sew his own stuff. So that's how I met Ferdinand Big R Senior. He he brought me by his father-in-law house. He brought me by Papa, and Papa told me how to sew. Ferdinand Big R. That's the chief of the Shine Warriors. So when he when he put the needle in my hand, that was it. Man. He, I ain't never turned back. Yeah. And wow. all, all he, was, he was Joe Adams' uncle. The chief of the Seminole the tribe that I was that I was trying to mask with, but that his 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 grandson was both. That's who I really wanted to mask with, but I had to go through training with him. So yeah, it was crazy, man. Back in the day, yeah, 92, 93, That's how I started masking. I started masking. I went through the ranks. I went through the ranks, man. It was wonderful though. I made a I made one seven wall suit. And then the next year I got recruited to match with the Seminole and I had to sew like five big patches at the age of 15. So, yeah. Wow. That's, how... <laughs> that's the way to get right in there. <laughs> very, right very, in. Very, very, very quick introduction. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I had to jump in and I had to get down 24 seven, learn everything. You have to learn it all. Yeah, when I was young, yeah. And then, and then, and then, uh, when when did you start shifting to the to the visual art side of things? Um, so you know, working with galleries and, and and what you know, did that did that all happen simultaneously? That you were making, um, you know, the the smaller, uh, not wearable pieces. Um, yeah. But yeah, when, when when did that when did that come about for you? You wouldn't believe, it. like, uh, I would say, four years ago now. Four. Uh, Four years ago. Wow. Yeah. Uh, my my real big shot is through my gathering. I give thanks to them for that. Uh, through through Arthur Roger Gathering. That's how I'm getting noticed through them. A big a big thanks to them. Uh. Uh. But Jazz Fest, I did I did I did contemporary craft and Jazz Fest. I applied and I got in one year, two years ago. So I got in. I did good. I, I really I sold out the last day I was I, I sold out. Then the next year I applied and I, I sold out again. When I got got uh best of show, I got I won an award, the best of show in contemporary craft. Uh, I was the first Mardi Gras Indian to ever apply or even get in contemporary craft. But uh I was in the second year. And Arthur Roger walked through and gave me a card and said, if I want to see him, if I want to do something like that. I knew nothing about galleries. I, I won't lie to you. I knew nothing about uh, about being an artist. I, I knew nothing about, uh, I won't lie to you. I, I, I uh, beat his suits. I've been, I beat his suits for over 20 years without even worrying about a dollar getting paid for a suit. So, I yeah, because yeah, suit, suit making is really, really expensive. I don't think folks know how expensive that is. Yeah, so I, I, it's uh, 
the art scene, uh, I got, I went, I, I got invited to do an exhibition at Princeton University with, with Jeff Weston, my good friend, a tenured professor at, at uh, Princeton University. And that was the opening of my brain to what all, all what, what I had already been there and I didn't know. So Jeff brought me around in Princeton and started showing me some things and some people and some artists that I should follow and that I should study. And um, it took like a year to really study what I needed to know. And he gave me the route to go, to go on. And I just, I just went and I'm still going and I'm still studying. You know, it's like, like I say, being born again. So yeah, it's, it's uh, the art scene, like getting in the art scene, I had already had an idea. I had never seen portraits beaded. I had never seen the uh, the, the jazz grace of New Orleans beaded and uh, celebrated like they should be, like I thought they should be. So by me being good at beating, I'm, I'm like, you know, a lot of people tell you, you you're an artist, you know, you hear that, you hear that a hundred million times, but man, you, you, you see, I make the suits and other people make the suits, but the youth coming up, I want them to feel that, you know, I had these aspirations of going to college to be an artist, but you don't know that you can get master degrees to be in art and different things. And that's one of the mighty grandians of the black masters in New Orleans go that route and show them that that can happen. So that's my, uh, that's my goals and, and, and what I'm doing and getting in the art game. And that's the reason why I go so hard with, uh, with beating and, and studying and learning more and more and trying to, you know, just open up the minds of different people that look at my art and see my art and just trying to get in, you know, get in them. So it's like, you know, like I, I study uh, Carrie James Marshall 24 seven. And so, woo, woo. I love Carrie. You know, you have to know, like I always tell people, there's some things, art is not magic. And for, for me to study him and him to, to I me mean, to never meet him, and him to articulate so so deeply in my heart and in my mind and in my soul through his 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 uh lectures and his speeches it's like he talking straight to me so it's like something was clicking and that's somebody that uh Jeff Weston had told me to look at and Barkley and there's different people but those people you know it's like I I live like them and I was like hold up I, you know so it's a connection so yeah it's it's a blessing that I got introduced to the right people and, you know, I'm going on this route. You know, I give thanks to the overseers and the elders. You know? Yes, yes. Um, I, I want to, I kind of want to, you know, I, I think art is this very visual thing. So I want to pull up a couple images of your work because uh, I, I, I think we just need to go there. Um, All right. And then we can, we can start talking about a, a few of these pieces. Let me see how... Excuse me, it takes a little bit with my uh, technology here. <laughs> uh, here we go. Okay, here we go. All right, I see. Hopefully, that's right in the middle of the screen for everyone. Um, yes, this is this is for for me this this uh this pre this piece uh and I'm a, I'm assuming it's Bra Coupe. Yeah, that's him. That's him. Bra yeah, Coupe. yeah. That's indeed. I you know I. I think this I think this piece um was one of the first ones that I saw uh, a couple of years ago and I was just like who is this person who can do this with beads um these tiny little itty bitty microscopic seed beads so you know this piece has to be thousands and thousands and thousands of these tiny tiny beads uh that that most that that most of us struggle you know to even pick up um you know, can, can you tell us about this piece? All right. So, Bra Coupe, uh, created in 2016. Um, the story was told to me by my friend Porsche West in 2009. So, in 2009, I learned about this prince, this African prince that wouldn't be sold at Congo Square and that didn't want to work and that started, that was a part of the uh, the slave revolt, 1811. So it's like, uh, 
this suit nine years later, I was, I was at the time when I was, the story was told to me, I was a spy boy. And I told my friend, I said, this suit had to be made by, by being an apron with a man. It, it had to be the man with the arm gone. So Brock Coupe, it stands for one arm bandit, cut off arms in French. So he was, he was, his, his, his head was cut off and put on a staff in the front of the Cabildo in New Orleans after his, 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 his uproar and his, his, his stature in Nouvelle Orleans at the time was mighty coup de fire. So the mighty coup de fire to the mighty Gua Indians, it had to be, it, mighty coup de fire to the mighty Gua Indians is the big team. So he was the first mighty coup de fire. So this, this, this man who stood six foot tall, you know, scared, they were scared of him, had to kill him, had to find me. They want to go get him before, you know, they, they have, they, they masquerade and things. He ready to, he ready to tear it up. That's the Mardi Gras Indian uh, uh, motto, you know, to make a fire and kill, kill him dead. And that's, that's what we was doing it for. We was, we were, we were doing it to, to pay on Mr. Brock Pay. So Brock Pay and some people like Brock Pay ran like, like, um, um, through the, through the, like the Underground Railroad. That's why you see it on the piece. That's why it's on that and the hands cut off the other hand. It's showing the um the um the candle, the light that's showing the light that we're not going through that anymore. So it's like, you know, that piece, that piece, it takes you to man, many different ways I can show you about this piece. The bottom of it is the Yoruba flags, you know, the chief flag. He was a king and he wouldn't work no more. So the piece is 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 deep, is deep for New Orleans. The Mardi Gras Indians don't know that we we mad for Brock Coupe. A lot of us think, mm -hmm. you know, we're paying homage to the American Indian for giving us refuge. But we wouldn't need the refuge if Brock Coupe wouldn't have been the, 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 the refugee. So, <laughs> man, if, I'm just saying, he was the man. He was the man. And people needed to know. And the dance up at the top with his queen is the Bambula dance. You know, and that's the dance that we do, the Mardi Gras Indian. So, uh, that, that 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 ship on there, that's the ship that he came on, his 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 strongness right there. Uh and his his in Kesey, his bag is his magic that he came with from Africa. So yeah, this this was uh I never knew when I beat it the piece that the piece would mean it. I tell you that much. Mm. It's uh the piece, the piece has brought a lot of, I wouldn't say uh fame to me. I would say uh, reverence, you know, and uh, uh, what it was supposed to bring, you know, uh, just just uh, acknowledgement of who the who the black masters of New Orleans really are. We we artists, and I'm just, you know, I'm I, like I always like I said a little while ago. I'm honored to be a part of the Arthur Roger Gathering. I give thanks that they uh, showcase my work like they do. You know, I give thanks. I I give thanks to Arthur Roger Gallery also for being our co-sponsor. And, 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 you know, I think it's, it's when you started working with them that, you know, the exposure just started to explode. I started to see your images everywhere. And I, I don't remember exactly the first time that, that I saw your work, but, you know, I, I love hearing the stories from you because when, when I see it, I'm just, it's just magical. I, I get some of the story, but hearing you tell the story, it just, it just brings, you know, the whole piece to, to life. And, um, I definitely want to show some of your suits because, you know, they're 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 so much deeper than that. And I think I actually want to um, pull up a detail of that piece right now. I might need some technical support here. <laughs> Let's see. So yeah, I just want I just want to pull that that piece up a little bit larger so we can just see some of the details within it um just you know it's it's just magical to see all of this um you know i i, I noticed the yoruba uh throne in in, in the background it, it looks like a very traditional yoruba uh throne and i think and i think that that's also something that that distinguishes you from many of the other 
um, more well-known Mardi Gras Indian chiefs is, is, is your, you have this connection to Africa um, that, that you're constantly telling through your story, whether it's, um, wh whether it's uh, you know, looking at you know, famous musicians that, that are from New Orleans. But I, th I think there's this, I think more so than any other um, artist or, or, or chief, your, your, your work is always hearkening back to specifically Yoruba, if not Ethiopia. Um, do, do, do you find that that's the case? Is that, is that controversial? Or, or, or how, how is that ex accepted within the community? I'm, 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 well, they, they got to accept it in the community. They put, <laughs> it's I'm what fly, you're doing, I'm, huh? I'm, fly, I'm doing a piece right now of my, my great-grandmother, Maddie Jackson. And, you know, the other day, my grandma told me she she knew that my great-grandmother was good. So that's that goes, and she knew that she that 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 they come from a part of Africa. So it's like, you know, uh uh Masu's my grandmother told me today, I love I love your work, baby, because it brings me back to them days, my good old days. So my grandma 84. So I I feel like studying the old and 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 bringing light to the old and making the old new. And, 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 and studying Africa and bringing the beauty of what we went through and what we gone and what we need to be is, is, is what needs to be beaded because my bead work takes a long time to do it. And I feel when I'm doing it, if I'm not doing something that's, that's really, really seriously important on the suits, the suits, the suits, I've, like I studied the American Indians, they didn't kill each other in, in New Orleans. A lot of my brothers sew suits to kill each other. The Indians killing each other. So, you know, that's that's something that got boring to me when my work got better. When I got better with my work, I was like, nah, I'm not sewing no red Indians anymore. So that's the main thing, not sewing no red Indians anymore. That's the main thing that mm. made me have to think about, well, which route you gonna go? To, to, and, and it's really a challenge making the suits uh, with another chief or another spy, but you challenging within the work. So I'm like, uh, my work going to be a story that they don't know. And that's a shame because none of my <laughs> brothers know our whole story. So, so it's, it's interesting and it's, it's challenging because they get upset because they can't beat it. And that's, that's, that's my challenge in the city. But my challenge within the art now, see, see it's different. It's different making my suit to, to fit within the spectrum, making my suit to fit in the space with different suits like Nick Cave sound suit. So it's like yes. my, 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 uh, my, my, uh, my, uh, what I say, my brothers and sisters in the Indian culture, in the masking Indian culture in New Orleans. That's that's something. That's a question you didn't have. I'm gonna show you why. This this an answer though. I'm gonna give it to you because it's like. That's the places that uh, contemporary art has, has taken my mind and my heart and my soul. It's, it's making the suits. It's taking me to a place when I'm making my suit, I already know I could beat the Indians on the street, but can my <laughs> suit be in that space where the Nick Cave sound suit? So that's what I'm mm. at. Yeah, it's new, it's new. It, it it I mean it it definitely is uh you know there, there was a when I when I came to visit you last summer into your in your studio uh I didn't know you were gonna have so many other visitors coming <laughs> to your studio I mean I, I don't I don't know I I don't know if you're at liberty to share any of that with any of the visitors if anything came of those visits but uh you know I, I'm sorry to put you on the spot with that <laughs> but I'm also curious to know. Yeah, where, where you know, where where have their suits gone? I, I I saw you've had an exhibition with the Tate. I mean, you've been yeah. everywhere. I did my suit, my suit. Uh, I went. It went to uh the Victorian Albert Museum in London. So I had I, that, oh, the, I did the VNA. Yeah, I did the London Design Festival last year, and that's 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 the first time I've heard of a a a, a, a Mardi Gras Indian suit going abroad and doing an exhibition in a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a museum in London. So this is, this is the first time I've done something like that. So that's, that's the route 
I hope I can get one of the suits and they can keep it. <laughs> so yeah, yes, just, yes, exactly. So that, that's the goals. That's the goals. That's the that's the teachings of the people that I'm studying. So yeah, yeah. That was the first time, and I, I'm hoping it don't be the last time. Uh, I, I I highly doubt that it'll, that'll be the last. I mean, man, you had curators coming. I was like, wow, I thought I was just coming in to see your little studio. And, you know, all of these, I won't name them, but yeah, all these all highly, highly recognized faces in the art and museum world just, you know, pouring into the studio to, you know, to, to look at your work. And so, yeah, I have no doubt. <laughs> Uh, you know, at the museums will be standing in line. <laughs> um, I want to I want to go into some of your portraits now. Um, so, right now, I think I've got Black Rose on the screen. Can yeah, can, can you go in and in, in? That's Kathleen Eldridge. Yeah. So this piece, this piece. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, this piece is real deep to me because I had wanted to be this piece for like three years and, and it's, it's, it's breaking out of doing the jazz people, the jazz people. So uh, this, this was, this, this piece, the rose, the, the flower in the head, I, uh, my wife, she helped me outline on that. And, and, and I, you know, my collab, my little help, I won't lie. She's sitting up here, so I got to give her some kind of <laughs> but so this, this, piece, uh, this piece, I wanted it to show what I can do in an authorizer gallery, in a space, I won't lie. Um, I, I studied uh, different different ways to, to, to be and, and put flowering into pieces and changing up colors. And I just like, I wanted to do the, the gaze, the gaze. And the Black Panther, the Black Panther party, you know, we studied that in school and they were in the Florida project right there in the night ward in, in my hood. So I just I just wanted to uh, to really do this piece because I like the gaze in the eye and how, how upset mm -hmm. she looked at, uh, at, on the podium when they were asking us some questions. You know, Kathleen Eldridge Cleveland, they were asking her all kinds of questions and she's sitting there looking like, what? Look at me. You know how they used to be. <laughs> Look at me. I asked that. That's how it was. So it's just that piece, you know. Uh, yeah, I wanted to show, show the guy that I could do some crazy stuff different ways. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. But you you definitely did. And you, you changed her. You made her, you kind of, you kind of gave her, uh, you know, th th this gives me vibes of like a, a Zulu uh, priestess, or or what was your inspiration behind this? That, that was the inspiration. So, I, uh, the 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 tribe that 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 jumps up and down with the, the beads in, around their neck, that's what made me do that around their neck. Uh, 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 and that's that's what that's what that's what inspired that. But just bringing it back to, to if I had the whole body, you would see it in. The, in a kufi, so you already know it's, it's, it's like ah uh, okay okay. I was going at with it all Africa, so yeah, that's that's my work. It's it got to have a touch of the homeland, the homeland, and that was that's that's just the elders in the city. They they teach us about Africa. Uh, uh, Jerome Smith, you know, that's one of the elders, the elder uh, brothers in our city. He ran Tamarine and Fan, and, and, and he was one of the elders that taught the young Indians uh, in the city and taught all of us about the Black Panther Party because he was a part of the Black Panther Party. So, you know, I, I just do the pieces that I know going to touch them, you know, it's going to touch the elders that's still here, that's going to give, you know, pay homage to them while they're still here. That's why I do pieces like that. All right, I'm going to pull up another of, of one that I think is outstanding. Hey. I think all your work is outstanding. Uh oh. <laughs> but you know, I think I think <laughs> I think Big Freedy it goes in a different direction. <laughs> I see where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, so this piece, this piece, see, I wish I wish I could talk to Frida and, and, and tell Frida about this piece. So this piece represents what I feel about us in this city. Frida, Frida the big dog, you know. I don't know, you know, she she seen it a bunch of times and you know, she showed me a lot of love, but this piece, I, I changed the background in my work. I wanted to show people that, like I had when I went, when I went to uh, Princeton with uh, to, with the exhibition with Jeff Westone, Jeff Westone brought me to a Hockney show. Me, me and my wife, all of us, we went to, that, that, that we in there with David Hockney. So I'm in there, I'm like, this is my first time in my life learning about the man. I go in there, he got big paintings on the wall. All of them sold $500,000. Everything is sold already. And he walks through the door smoking a cigarette. I'm like, this little bitty man. And so he teaching me about the art. This is my first time in an art show in my life. So I'm like, what? Hold up. So this piece, the background is inspired by Hockney's pieces. Uh, I can see with the color palette. Yeah, so so I saw those pieces and I was like, whoa, I could do that. So yeah, and then the uh the 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 the, the different color polka dots and stuff, that's all inspired by what I saw at that show. I wanna I said I'm gonna put Frida in that in that hockney style. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah, that's that style. Yeah, that's all that is. It's, it's it, I think it's still I think it's still very your your style though. You know, I, I think only you're the person who can see the Hockney <laughs> references in there. But you know, this this is this in my view, this is 100 percent you. Um thank you. <laughs> yeah, I try to change yeah. up a lot of things in it. I, I thank you so much. Yeah, I try to change up a lot of different ways I, I beat it with this piece. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what, what are you working on? Anything right now that you can share with us? Yeah, uh, uh, let me see. They, they flat on, they flat. Now I'm going to show you right quick. Watch this. All so right. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, Jimi Hendrix. That's Jimi, being Jimi Hendrix right here. And this one, this is my great great grandmother. So this is my great. Um, um, let me see if I can show it. You see it? This my yes, great. Yes. Yes. And her her boyfriend at the time, Boo Jack. So they from Cottonport, Louisiana. And this is a picture. This the original picture I'm reading it from. Uh, wow. Uh, so this piece, what Phil Lavelle inspires that one. I won't lie to you. So, so that's 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 a, that's oh oh that's, oh what Phil? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's what that's what inspires this piece. So I'm studying his work to to finish it. The background, just thinking of, you know, he all on wood, but he cold, and I just love his stuff. So, and it's all yeah, it's all it's all it's all some some kind of way. It looks like it comes from where my great grandmother and my great great grandmother and my grandma comes from. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sewing those, and I I just finished at the nurses last week. Yeah. Oh, that was just last week. I felt like I saw it way before last week, but yeah, <laughs> maybe because it's been everywhere. Yeah, I just finished those. Yeah. yeah. I think I think it's also really helpful for people to see how meticulously you work row yeah. by row yeah. one bead at a time you know yeah. you know going yeah. in there because i think when we see the finished piece it's hard to imagine every got, little bit that goes into creating it all right let me show you come i got a camera i got a cameraman in here hold up let oh, okay you. okay all right all right all right the, the, the white she is the cameraman <laughs> show everybody how to get down <laughs> You see? Keep going, come on, come down. Right there. So I'll put some light down. So little bitty beads at a time. Tiny, tiny, yeah. tiny beads. <laughs> and I'm doing a lot stitch, just like this. 
all day long, live stitching it. Going around one, attacking down. So you still using your rack? I showed you how to use on Dimitri. I I I, <laughs> I am. I don't I don't want to bring my own artistry into this, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just messing yeah, with you. It, yeah, because I want to show you that rack. Yeah, I, this this the rack. Yeah. You are tight. And, and and I, I make sure it's tight. It's it's insanely tight, and um, I have definitely tried to get my lines as, as tight and as precise as yours. And I, and I, and I, it's difficult. <laughs> it's very, very difficult. My lines are nowhere near as tight as yours. Um, and I use this too, though. And yeah, yeah. And I, I, I just, I just think there, there's a mastery. It's beyond craft. It's, it's, it's an art form that you have down packed. Um, and I love that, you know, that you're willing to show your art. I also love, um, you know, I want to know a little bit more about Assemble and the Material Institute. Oh, yeah. They, they are art and architecture collective. And they, they, they some good, good people. Assemble is my people. That's, that's, that's Maria and Louis. And they, they, when I, since I met them, they, I, I won't lie to you, that's some more in, uh, knowledge. I've got knowledge and I've I've got blessed. I've I've, I've uh, I did a, a exhibit last year at the Logan Center in Chicago, uh, and we did tufting. We we showed how to tuft and and did tufting guns. And I learned uh, I got to see some Matisse pieces, and I got to uh, almost got to get to the Astor Gates uh, studio. So. You know, she, uh, they know so many people and they, you know, they're doing so much of good things. We started the school, uh, Material Institute, and the school mm -hmm. is still going on, but COVID got it shut down right now. But uh, yeah, I still I still teach my beating class on Saturdays when they pop back up after this COVID thing. But, uh, you know, I love Material Institute and I love Assemble. Assemble, yeah, they're a good group because you know, when they came down here, they, they were working from, I will tell you, literally dirt. And when they showed me the building, I was like, how are you going to do this in the <laughs> New Orleans, down here in New Orleans? This is not going to happen. You got big dreams and aspirations. You know, but me and my friend, my brother David, we we, we in there, my wife, we in there, we like, you sure they're going to do this? In less than <laughs> two more weeks, uh, a month, they were working. And I could see, I could see a lot of money went into it, and uh, it was free for my my community and free for my neighborhood mm. and free for people outside of the community. So uh, they're hundred. And you're one of the and you're one of the you're the founding one of the founding teachers of the Material Institute. Can you tell us more about what that is, and you know who who do you serve um, with your teaching? Yeah, I serve the whole community and mostly youth with my teaching and. Uh, it's a fashion school. It's a fashion and it's an art school, architecture school. Uh, uh, it's a uh, it, it's, it's even agriculture now. They even have a farm. Mm. So so yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's it, it, and then it's an experimental fashion school because you can do you know anything you want. You can do as long as it's into the art, and it's uh, funded through Mona Museum in, in Australia. So. You know, it's 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 real it's it's real good for my community. And I'm thinking after after this Corona thing and COVID thing, the community will need Material Institute. I know this mm -hmm, for sure mm -hmm. because you know if you think about it, like we don't know what's going on with education in New Orleans right now. We don't know how children are going to be able to get back to schools in New Orleans. So it's just you know the summer when the summer gets up and running. If something gets clean in different phases in New Orleans, we need to have you know, outlets for the children to go to and for different youths to be able to go back to and create. So, yeah, they're going to be waiting for those doors to open. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. I um I want to remind everyone because we just we have a few minutes left. Um, please drop your questions into the chat and or the Q&A section and we'll get to them. Um, I, I feel like I've taken a lot of time with this, so I would definitely want to make sure I get to the questions. Um, Dave uh, wants to know, what is the future of the culture 
And how is the next generation going to afford beads and feathers and to live in New Orleans? Man. So it's a couple questions. That's a good one. So the future, look, the future of the culture rides on my shoulders, man. A lot mm -hmm. of us, you know, uh, that's one of the reasons why I bead and I bead and I bead and I bead. And that's the main reason why I think the elders and the overseers of today helped, helped me wherever they at to be able to do this for a living and you know make some out of it because the future of the of the culture won't be in the future to be able to pay for feathers and uh pay for rhinestones and pay for beads. Cause uh my 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 in my time I've lost many years making my 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 suits to keep the culture alive. So mm. I feel like, uh the culture rides on my shoulders because I can show them a different way and a different route. You know, as youthful children, the children that's coming up in the culture, they need to have a you know an outlet and a, a way of knowing where they can go with this culture. This culture, you can become, uh, uh, you can get a doctrine in art in this culture if you knew that you can be an artist and be in it, that you can be, you know, mm -hmm. a contemporary or a fine artist. And this, and nobody in the culture when I was a kid coming up, none of the elders knew this. So that's, mm -hmm. that's a problem. And, and, and I'm into problem solving. So, uh, that was a good question. Like I'm into problem solving, and I learned. I like. I'm, I always go back. I reference Kerry James Marshall because that that a lot of different problems were problems for him. Like I see him black faces in 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 different uh, art pieces in in the museum, and that was a problem for him. And he changed that, and he you know he solved that problem. And so uh, the like I say, the future of this culture rides on. Who's going to take, you know, the reins, and who's going to step up to the plate to try to show people that we can make it through our art? You know, a lot of different uh, cultures of, across the world uh, live off of their culture. So, a lot of people in this culture, you know, they lose off of the culture. You know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know. It's it's like like I say it's it's not magic it's not magic and it, like I've been doing this for a long time over twenty seven years mm -hmm. and it's been three years and uh, three and a half years three almost four years and I've been you know noticing it's hard work and and people have to know that it's not it's not a a blanket of an eye it's hard work my my B work look quick but it's hard work and I, I take a lot of time on it and I do a lot of studying so. You know, that's what I want to show the youth in the city that it's fun to 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 get out mm -hmm. and get online and do things like this with you and see all those museum people come see you and you just learn right. about you know, it's like you're learning about different art, but but I I like my grandmother told me she was a school teacher at Warren Eastern Fundamental High School. I went to Warren Eastern. I'm like a sponge. You do you 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 give you give me some, I'm gonna soak it up. You tell me I need to soak that up, I'm gonna soak it up. Whereas I know so much, you might not know uh, enough. So it's like that. So that's my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a good question. Yeah, I love I love I love that question. And, and just just so people can get can get a sense, how long does it take you to work on a suit? And if you don't mind sharing, what's the co approximate cost of a complete uh, suit? All right. Well, a suit is supposed to take a year. It's supposed to take you, you know, 12 months to make your suit. You know, uh, wow. Commitment. I beat the odds last year. I, I started <laughs> my suit in November. So wow. And it brings to so that's that's a I, I I got the pictures to prove it. So it's just it was that was, that was some that was some bragging rights, but I did it I did it to show them I did it to show I'm glad I'm glad to be able to say this I did it to show Arthur Roger Gallery that I could do it. My brother Arthur Roger I had to show them my buddies over there, you know, because they were like Chief, how you gonna do this? I, I said I'm gonna show y'all. So uh, and the cost the cost. I wore that suit one time and Corona came and knocked us off. That suit cost me over $7,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's important for people to know that level of, a, of commitment that goes into there. Um, I had a couple other questions before uh, we go. Do, do you have any plans for if Mardi Gras 2021 is canceled? Sure is, is there any conversations around that? I'm going to throw a double shoot in this time. I think it's going to be canceled. I oh. think it is. <laughs> so the suit I'll make, if it is, it'll be outstanding. So, you know, it's, it, I, it'll it'll get the whole story that I'm trying to create. It'll get that story in the wholeness. You know, because mm. the suit, you have to make the streets. So you make a suit and you make the streets, but you might not get your whole story. So my story, mm. If we don't mask this year, I'll be able to, you know, add on to it. Okay. But yeah, we they have a conversation about it, but my convo been about my art and I ain't worried about it. I don't think I don't think my male, I, I don't think Kim Trail gonna let that happen. That's a mm -hmm. that's a that's a, that's she I I think she's been doing a good job trying to keep people safe. And people need to wear their masks. And if people need to wear masks all the way to October, I don't think we're gonna try to flood New Orleans again with Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't think we're gonna mask. Yeah, we uh, yeah be, I, we I think it's a great idea. I mean, yeah, New Orleans has been hit so hard. Uh, uh, it, it just wouldn't. Yeah, I, I I I love that the conversations are already going and thinking about, it, and I love that you're thinking about. Well, hey, I have extra time now. I can really go in on it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, someone, someone is asking, Anita wants to know, have you been to Africa and have you been able to engage any artists there? No, oh, I, I haven't been to Africa. That's a dream, but I have been able to engage in, in with the artists from Africa. Some uh, came here and they, they, they did, uh, some, some murals with, uh, a brother bank slave from, uh, Nairobi and they, they did some murals with be Mike and when they came, they wanted to meet me and that was a blessing. So I got to meet them and they came, chilled in the studio with me. And I've been, you know, interacting with them ever since on, on Instagram, but they did a beautiful mural around the corner uh, from my house. So yeah, I, I but uh, yeah, I, I link up with a lot of, uh, a, a few more Ethiopian artists and um, yeah, uh, Benji Reed, a few different artists that, that are in London, a bunch of artists mm -hmm, in London. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Africa, that's my dream. That's my dream to get to Africa. I hope, I hope, I hope that happens for you real soon. <laughs> um, I just, uh, someone says the green suit this year of Mardi Gras was amazing. Uh, I concur completely. Uh, mind blowing, especially now hearing that you started in November and you were done in February for something that normally takes takes a year. I mean, I think that really shows you were able to illustrate your mastery of your art form completely. <laughs> that no, 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 no one can argue that, uh, especially when you see the detail. And folks can again go visit uh, Demond's um, website, um, demondmelonson.com, right? Um, I also, um, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out for this conversation. Thank you today for putting in that in, into the chats. Um, and thank you for, thank you for everyone who joined us. We had a, a pretty full house today with us. Um, I also want to give an extra special thanks uh, to Arthur Roger Gallery for co-sponsoring um, this conversation. If, if, you, if anyone joined us late, uh, the conversation will live on the Museum of the African Diaspora's YouTube channel. Check that out. You can see our other conversations that we've had over the last month. And uh, please join us next Wednesday, same time, 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, 3 o'clock p.m. <laughs> Central Time, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Taman, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate, appreciate thank you, brother. You and Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always. See you soon. See you soon. Yes, yes. I'll be down there. I'll, I'll, I'll be coming through. <laughs> All right, now. All right. All right, bless. All right, bless. Killed it, come on. Oh, my God.